people like, like the earlier interview on the other is uh, from Cointelligence. He, he feels that we should not allow and invite people like yourself to this uh, stage. We, by the way, we, we totally disagree. Oh, I agree. I mean, he has this whole um, sort of hypocrisy about don't let people speak, but don't censor people. It's interesting that. And at the same time, why? Because he doesn't want people listening. He doesn't want the things that he's actually doing. He doesn't want people to have those exposed. So, for instance, security tokens. Well, security tokens are just dematerialized assets. There's nothing special about a token for a company. A company has value because it's a company, not because it has a token. In the 90s, there were a number of SEC actions because of distributed tokens. There was free IPO, web IPO, MyGo, and many others. All of these came about as free web stock offerings and other such things. All of them issued tokens online. And people run around going, it's decentralized. Well, that's all because of a professor, uh, Lawrence Lessig, uh, not Mr. Sabo. Mr. Sabo has basically taken a whole lot of his ideas in writing and has never once actually attributed any of that to him. And if you read all of the stuff from uh, Professor Lessig, you will see those ideas. So no, sorry, smart contracts are not Nick Sabo's. Old farts like me who remember the 90s have gone through this. Uh, before we, we go into that, I just wanted to finish on that point about why we wanted you to come. Because mm -hmm. what we like is that even though people disagree with you, and I think you know there's a, there's a modest uh, modicum of opinion out there that, is, that actually disagrees with you and, and has called you a fraud, we like the fact that you're prepared to come here and, and actually present yourself and, and answer our questions. So if we may, we want to ask you a couple of questions. Here. Of course. First thing is Enchain. What is Enchain doing? What is, what, what, what is the company doing? So Enchain is a group I founded after moving from Australia, not as the fake media likes to report in December 2015 as I was fleeing and everyone's got these fake stories. I actually I moved before that. My kids started school here um, earlier that year. Uh, we rented a house here in October of 2015. So, so it's your company here, yeah, your group? It's the one I founded, yes. Yeah. Like what, every other sort of group. What's he there. doing? Is he promoting, uh, you know, uh, Satoshi, Satoshi Vision? No, we do, we do uh, sort of creation of patents. We've got, at the moment, 826 filed. We have 1,450 in the pipeline. How many granted? Uh, granted, around 200. Uh, there's a number of other ones about to be. Uh, we've just got notification on the agent based during completeness, some of the vote counting ones. So let's do these patterns because it was very interesting. Um, I'm going to uh, declare not an interest, but a, an interest, a different, uh, I'm interested, in that a headhunter approached me to ask me before you'd hired Jimmy whether I'd be interested in becoming the chief executive of Enchain, which is an interesting question. Um, and I delved into it a little bit and also uh, uh, looked it at your patent strategy. And you mentioned yesterday that I think you've got lightning, for example, part of lightning covered. You know, not, not part, all of it. All of it. Okay, great. That's, that's interesting. So I would then pinged our patent attorney, because I run a hub for blockchain company, and we brought in this patent attorney to present to us. And I said, how many granted patents last year does Enchain have? And what is the next nearest competitor? Uh, I guess you know the number, but it's 96, right, last year, something like that? I can't remember the top Yeah, so it's fully granted. So, so that means we can't see what's in the pipeline, but you've just said mm -hmm. close to like 200. Uh, yeah, and uh, in the pipeline, there's another 600 that are on there published and 1,450 to go. So uh, the next nearest, uh, well, the next one above you is obviously IBM, who've done probably twice as much granted last year. And then others. No, IBM have probably two patents related to blockchain yeah. and other ones where they throw the word. Okay, so what are you going to do with these patents? Choose how the industry moves. It's interesting. So, a developer out there today choosing to develop something in what they believe, perhaps incorrectly, is open source software. Do open they need source to... doesn't mean free. Of course not, but, but IBM uh, has open source software. Yeah. So, in the 60s, IBM was open source. Microsoft is open source. So, here's a question. A developer developing on, say, Hyperledger, 
Should they be mindful oh, of... Hyperledger ledger's not a blockchain, by the way. Okay, but let's say they were developing on that. If it's not a blockchain, then I'm sure it's not a threat to you. Um, but if they were developing on Hyperledger, does that mean that they should be mindful of the patent fortress that Enchain is developing? Uh, we're happy to take licensing. So if somebody was to build using uh, Enchain product, if you like, they would, they, you would, they would be free to develop. I mean, do you have a position? Free, no. Uh, Sorry? Free, no. Free-ish. There's a commercial. There's no ish. I mean, they can do what they want as long as they pay licensing fees. So your intention is to build, continue to build this patent fortress and to license for revenue in the industry. Most of it will be given out for use on BSV. Uh, so people will have uh, a scalable platform but um, we can already get tens of thousands of transactions per second after the Genesis upgrade will be rolled out with all the miners. I worry that it might stifle creativity in the industry. Do, Do you, you think it might? Can you see how I would be concerned about that? Do I care? No, I can see that you don't. In which case, let's go to a different topic. So, uh, I which is creativity. We, if, what creativity? Well, we have STOs running around saying that they're new because they're a token. So what? Wealth isn't money. Wealth is the creation of goods, services, assets, capital. Because you've created a token, so what? That just makes you another scammy loser. If you create a token and you don't have a business, you don't have anything. You've got Tone Bays over there. That's it. Empty. Vacuous. Okay, well, in that case, let me ask you some other questions, which is, in the recent uh, Florida uh, court case, uh, the, the questions were raised about, and I think that the judge asked uh, you, I think it ended up with saying, you, you were saying that the access to those uh, Bitcoin are in uh, trust. Uh, I'm not going to talk about an ongoing court case, and that was a magistrate, not a judge. A magistrate. Okay. But the publicly reported part of it, can we discuss that? Um, no, there's nothing accurate in any of those reports. Oh, People see. have a whole lot of... I wouldn't read um, crypto Twitter or crypto reporting. <laughs> I mean, I've found used toilet paper with more accuracy. Uh, so, the, so, so we're not going to expect to see that trustee come forward in the next few months and, and move some of those. Why would I want to talk about my finances on, on stage? I if, if you go to Bill Gates, would you say, hey, Bill, where are you spending your money tomorrow? No, only because I, I like that you come and you hold yourself open to, to being questioned, which is yeah. wonderful. And my family's finances are my family's finances. Absolutely. So, the, but, but it's also about your, in, your, your, the way that people perceive you. And I think that people would be a lot more happy to adapt, adopt Bitcoin SV if they, uh, you know, BSV, if they felt that the integrity of what you're saying would come true. So if you just moved one tiny part of that holding, then that would... Then you don't really understand Bitcoin, do you? No, that's probably right, Craig. Craig. So probably right. Which people are going to actually answer. discover what Bitcoin's like in the next year, and not because of uh, the things where you can't have your assets frozen. Oracle has had read-only databases for 30 years now, and people update records on those read-only databases every day. Do you realize how you do that? You write a new record. You don't roll back and change. You don't roll back blockchain. You write a new record. Bitcoin, it's not about decentralization, centralization, everyone taking over. We're gonna issue decentralized bonds. What the hell is a decentralized bond? I mean, honestly, what a stupid concept. I'm going to raise money decentralized. I'm going to go to you, and you can have part of my money. Yay! You said that Bitcoin's not intended to be lawless, right? It's intended to work in the law. In the last sentence says, we'll follow rules. Rules include law. The difference between a rule and law is law is a rule with a consequence. It is a subset of the word. And miners don't create rules. They enforce rules. That is an important word. I keep stressing this. I'm going to start buying copies of the Oxford and Cambridge Dictionary for people so that they can actually read the white paper and understand what the hell these words mean. So it's more about identity being firewalled rather than... Correct. Right? Look at the privacy section. Identity is separate. Then you have this ticker out there which verifies things. 
and identity is separate. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. In that diagram, it says the word identities. So let me ask you then the question that flows from that. Yesterday, I mentioned this morning, we asked John McAfee, who just launched this new exchange, where there's almost zero KYC, uh, that if a terrorist was caught in six months' time and uses exchange to finance it, and it's proven that that was the case, is that okay? And his answer was yes. Do you? And Mr. McAfee, like everyone else, will eventually get caught. Blockchain is an immutable evidence trail. It is traceable. Of it is utterly traceable. It is the opposite of what everyone's been running around. It is private, but not anonymous. Those records are admissible. Every single trace is admissible. MLD5, which is already here, applied in Britain and gold-plated, requires that you have all of these things if you're over the amount. So, on McAfee's exchange, he can validly take, say, payments of £20 from a terrorist. And those terrorists can happily exchange £20 a day. Go for it. Okay, so, that's, you see, what I enjoy about this is that I love the fact that I agree with somebody. If somebody asked me what I think about uh, uh, what you're seeing and, and your claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto. And I said, yes. I don't care if you think you're Elvis Presley. If you've, got, if you've got something useful to contribute to this industry, I want to hear about it, right? Uh, and so I love the fact that in this discussion, I, I can connect with you. I really, really get it. But I want to have, and the industry would like to have greater regard for your work, which would be propagated better if some of the claims that you make were, were not unproven or could be more proven. So please move just something or ask your You don't prove so. anything by moving a coin. That is the Ross Ulbrich Dread Pirate Robert defense. It started with him. You prove things with evidence. Unfortunately, for evidence. some of the other people out there, the university still has my thesis from 2008. They still have my proposal. So, I guess on that one alone, you can make the decision when it comes out, which it will. When? Did Satoshi, uh, we've got a court case. Okay, so that was a couple of months, right? Yeah, that'll be soon. And you can make the decision, did Satoshi plagiarize me? Because there are sections of the white paper, whole paragraphs in some of my work. You just said, did Satoshi yeah. plagiarize me? Yes, wow. either I am Satoshi, or Satoshi plagiarized me. You can make the choice. I don't really care. Because he actually took whole paragraphs he from my LLM. He so it's either me or I don't really care if you like it. Whew. And Mr. Tone and everything like that can scoff. <clears throat> well, I realize what I'm not so SPV. We patented. All the IP to IP stuff that no one understood. Patented. You guys, if you want to scale Bitcoin, you want to know how you can actually do it, you want to scale any blockchain, you want to make Hyperledger a real product, we own the only way to do it. Everyone gave me shit for years, See, so I patented it. Craig, I love the fact that you think you can solve, you know you can solve the scaling issue, right? This I already is have. Right? Wonderful news, right? But we want to believe it. But what you just said, some of the things you just said, I mean, I'm not a... a I'm not, I'm not a okay, psychologist, no, no. But, but here's, here's the point. No pus. I'm not a religion. He said, I want, to I want to believe it. I don't give a fuck. I noticed. I've got patents. We have patents. It's that simple. We've got this stuff called law. Roger and everyone else can run around going, patents don't matter. You're using force. Big bad man. So what? Do you At the end of the day, you can use them, or we can shut you down. You can pay the license fee, or we can shut you down. If you're IBM, you can pay us a license fee. We have the patent on EDI, EDI on a blockchain. It's a $14 trillion industry. Do I care that you don't like that? Do you care that your integrity is called into question here? Do you? Think I care? I don't. I've got a patent on a $14 trillion industry where we can <laughs> reduce the fees to Walmart by $500 million a year. Do you think Walmart will go $500 million or Aussie Badman? 
Aussie bad man, 500 million. I don't know about you, but I think the guys in Walmart will care more about the 500 million. You may be right that uh, big corporate would care more about profits, but I guess society also cares about integrity and people, and I would love you to be proven to be Satoshi, but so I kind of what you're saying is, yeah. you don't do my way, that's not integrity. We want this. We demand you do this. No, no, we suggest. want Bitcoin to be this way. Suggest. It, no. Suggest. Demand. It's yeah. demand. You want me to be what you want me to be, so therefore... You're right. I have no right to insist on that, but I guess what I would say in concluding our bit is that your patent fortress, which you talk about so, so readily, um, is the bit that worries me a little bit because it's uh, forcing your way. You, you want us to all be your way. And my invention. Legally. Invent something else. That's probably <laughs> a very good piece of advice at that moment. In the meantime, I'd like us to invite um, the next uh, speaker on to join us because we're now going to go into a, a duel. Just to say, there is a, before the duel starts, there's a little known fact that um, people don't know uh, about Craig, and that is he tries to grow tomatoes at home. But your travelling doesn't help, does it? No, I actually used to um, have bonsai trees as well, and they're all dead now. <laughs> they, they, I had some really good old bonsai trees, and Buddy and Shane and all the travel I have to do, they're all, every single one of them's dead. <laughs> My tomatoes are all, they keep bursting and things like that because I'm not there to, to do things. And the gardener sucks because the last time I, I he actually mowed my pumpkins. <laughs> That's probably not advisable. <laughs> Please send us and tweet a picture of your mowed pumpkins next time. It will be like I'll, I'll make sure I do. Thank you. But for, so put your hands together. The, the things I sacrificed. Uh, thank Craig for uh, uh, the advice. And, uh, we're going to just slightly adjust this. They like to adjust the stage for the, for the duel. So. <laughs>